While I don't like to show off, I sometimes come down to Muscle Beach to flex and stay in shape because one needs to maintain a healthy body in order to benefit from a healthy mind and spirit. Sometimes it just takes me a little while to get warmed up. Let's try this one more time. Okay, now she must just have beginner's luck. Let me try to get some air. I guess that we're all born with different talents, endowed with various degrees of natural skill, strength, and intelligence, but we can also all improve our various weaknesses with lots of practice. While none of the ladies at Muscle Beach seem impressed or intimidated with my upper body strength, you better believe they still know who the world's most dangerous anthropologist is. Now let's go have a stroll by the water. The term occult means secret or hidden in the context of supernatural, mystical, or magical beliefs, practices, or phenomena. From a modern Christian perspective, these practices are considered heresy and frowned upon, and a few short centuries ago were punishable by death, usually after a considerable amount of torture. Before Christianity, however, much of the spirituality of the ancient world involved mysticism and magic and was performed out in the open. This was especially true in places that were influenced by a demographic of people who are mostly remembered by the color red, the most famous being the Phoenicians, which means red in Greek, but also the Minoans, Etruscans, Egyptians, Mycenaeans, and several Native American tribes, among others on both hemispheres of the Americas. These ancient civilizations were known for being seafaring and controlled a vast global trade network which generated great wealth, especially during the Bronze Age, but came to a relatively abrupt end after a series of wars which ended in defeat at the hands of the Roman Empire. We're outnumbered, and the Romans have chosen a battlefield that plays to the strengths of its infantry. It's a wise choice, but it's not as wise as they think. Ready yourself! When they see our cavalry advance, they will respond. Whatever your losses, you must drive them back and sow complete confusion.
some scholars contend that the original and early forms of Christianity was considerably different from the type that the Roman Catholic Church disseminated several centuries after the life of Christ. Some researchers claim that Jesus himself may have been part of a sect known as the Essenes, which practiced a form of Gnosticism, which implies a direct connection with divinity, as opposed to requiring a pope, priests, and a hierarchical power structure that was imposed later by the church. These Gnostic practices were deemed heretical, vilified, and forced to go underground, especially in places like Europe, where the Inquisition hunted and executed those that continued to practice in secret. Groups like the Cathars, Templars, and what in a general sense are referred to as pagans were labeled as witches and either exiled or killed. In a prior video I made called A Brief History of Witches, which I'll leave a link to in the description, I had said that many of the witches were RH negative and that the rhesus negatives were targeted. Of course, many of you astutely commented that RH negative blood factor was discovered in 1940, so how would they have known who to target centuries earlier? While you guys are absolutely correct, my intention was to make you think, without spelling it out, they were, according to some, targeting a specific race that was entering Europe from the Middle East. These people were bringing their old religion into Europe and many Roman soldiers, for example, subscribed to these Aryan rituals, which went by different names. In the case of the soldiers, Mithraism was most common and the emperor felt threatened by it. These ancient religions, which predate Christianity by many millennia, and some claim go all the way back to the Ice Age, during the mythical times of Atlantis, continue to be practiced in secret under the guise of alchemy, with the ancient teachings disguised as symbols and passed on orally or in the form of some esoteric books. Some of these books were discovered a few years ago in the Czech Republic, many containing instructions of sex rituals and what would be considered by most to be dark magic. It turns out that this esoteric library belonged to the inner occult order of the SS, the Black Sun, and more specifically Himmler, who was very into the occult as a sort of technology, as the Germans believed the ancient Aryans possessed powers which have been lost to modern man. In the distant past, the Atlanteans, the fourth root race of creation, had split into pure and bestial species. After many thousands of years, the pure race, the Aryan godmen of the fifth root race, had interbred with the beasts. The result was catastrophic decline and the near loss of the Aryan psychic powers. The SS occult elite regarded themselves as a form of holy knights, like the Knights Templar and Teutonic Orders, and this library of 13,000 books found near Prague had not been accessed since World War II. Norwegian newspapers reported claims that at least some of the material was seized from the Norwegian Order of Freemasons in Oslo during the Nazi occupation of the country, and this is possible, and I'm sure many books were taken from similar secret societies all over Europe occupied by the Germans. Himmler founded the H. Sonderkommando in 1935, the H stood for Hex, which is the German word for witch. Their mission was to collect as much information as possible on sorcery, the occult, and the supernatural in general. The majority of the collection was known as the Witch's Library. It focused on witches and their persecution in medieval Germany. Himmler believed that the Roman Catholic Church attempted to eliminate the German Aryan race with witch hunts. This was also the case with what we call werewolves, which I've already covered in a prior video. From the perspective of the SS elite, they represented the descendants of the Protestant side of the infamous Thirty Years' War 
in which there was a split in the church, which resulted in a degree of religious freedom and the Protestant Reformation. Himmler also allegedly learned that one of his ancestors had been burned as a witch, which I can't confirm, but the idea that Aryans were being burned to death is common knowledge in occult orders. The books were to be kept in Weibelsberg Castle in Western Germany, which was given the name Black Camelot by some, and is where Himmler created his court of SS knights, mimicking King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Today, the castle is a museum, and the esoteric occult practices of the National Socialist Party is rarely discussed, except to ridicule. But there are some exceptions, however, particularly in places in South America, where beliefs in ancient civilizations like Atlantis, magic, and other occult practices were shared with the Germans and continued after World War II. When one thinks about an occult connection between the Germanic or Prussian Empire and South America, the first nation that likely comes to mind is Argentina, as relations between Germany and Argentina stretch back to 1871, when the first ambassador of Germany was sent to Argentina. German immigration in Argentina is the largest in Hispanic America. Over three million Argentines are of German descent. They had great influence in the Argentine education system and many German schools were placed in the country. Argentina stayed neutral during World War II, except for the very end, but after the war, under President Juan Perón, many German National Socialist officials immigrated to Argentina and other parts of South America. Argentina is strategically located near one of nationalist Germany's most secretive colonies, called Base 211, located in Neuschwabenland, Antarctica. While I've covered Antarctica in numerous videos, including the advanced technology the Germans developed during World War II that was moved there, and many people speculate was the true source of the UFO phenomena of the 40s and 50s, Today I'd like to turn our attention to another South American nation which had favorable ties to the German Empire and that was Chile. The first ties between Germany and Chile can be traced back to the 16th century when the first German settlers arrived in the newly found settlements and in 1810 when Chile became independent from Spain Hamburg was one of the first cities that engaged in intense trade with Chile. During the revolution of Germany in 1848, as Chile encouraged Germans to immigrate, more and more German settlers arrived in Chile. In modern day's relationship, Chileans view Germans positively, and Germans view Chileans in a similar manner. Miguel Serrano, who passed away in 2009, was a Chilean diplomat, writer, and occultist who supported the German National Socialist Party during the war and after it. He became a prominent figure in the esoteric movement which mirrored many of the occult ideas being explored by the SS. Chile also remained neutral during most of World War II, but Serrano campaigned in support of Germany and favored a far-right political ideology. In 1942, he joined an occult order founded by a German migrant which combined pro-Aryan sentiment with ceremonial magic and kundalini yoga. This order claimed that the group owed its allegiance to a secretive Brahmin elite who resided in the Himalayas, a topic which I covered in my prior video called the Order of the Green Dragon. Through techniques of harnessing and transmuting life force energy, which in the East is known as Chi or Ki and called Prana in India. This energy is also known as Orgone, a term coined by another German researcher, Wilhelm Reich, who based the word off of orgasm. The order espoused a belief in an astral body, 
which could be awakened through various rituals and meditative practices by amplifying and channeling vril or sex energy prior to a full climax which was said to make available to the practitioner access to the astral realms. Another influential Germanic occultist that migrated to South America was Arnoldo Krumheller, a German esotericist who became an important figure in the spread of occultism in Latin America. He moved to Chile and other parts of Latin America where he founded several occult orders which included rituals like a Gnostic Mass as performed by other occultists such as Aleister Crowley but in other respects differed from approaches taken by Crowley so I wanted to be sure to point that out as well. As the Second World War officially ended, Serrano was convinced that the Fuhrer had not committed suicide in Berlin as was claimed by the victorious allies. Instead, Serrano believed that he had escaped and was living in Antarctica, either in a secluded, warm environment on the continent or, more than likely, under the ice cap itself in a military colony established by the U-Boat Division. After visiting Antarctica as a journalist with the Chilean army in 1947 and 1948, Serrano was absolutely convinced about the nationalist German occupation of the South Polar continent and wrote a book espousing that, quote, Antarctica is inhabited by unknown beings. He then traveled to Germany and then Switzerland where he met the psychoanalyst Carl Jung and published a book about his time there. It seems Serrano has always been fond of Dr. Jung and the human potential. Quote, In 1947, I took a trip to the Antarctic, which I subsequently described in a book called Invitation to the Ice Fields. One thing I did not mention in that book, however, is that I took with me a book entitled The Ego and the Unconscious by Carl Gustav Jung. In my book, I explain the circumstances which brought me to meet Carl Jung. He wrote the foreword for my book, The Visits of the Queen of Sheba. I think that this Swiss professor knew better than anyone else in our time who H really was. Jung stated that H was possessed by the collective unconscious of the Aryan race. This means that H was the spokesman of the whole Aryan world. This extraordinary theme is explored in my book, The Last Avatar. Lucifer is the morning star. I'm a Luciferian in the sense that Lucifer is the morning star, the most beautiful light, and the morning star is a god, goddess, Venus. Contrary to misconceptions, Lucifer has nothing to do with Satanism. The Third Reich banned the Thule Society and other occult orders because there was too much old nonsense in these esoteric clubs, as well as some connections with Freemasonic societies, Aleister Crowley Satanism, and so on. The SS was also influenced by the Templar Order. They tried hard to produce the Overman by using blood alchemy, the absolute man. The SS tried to transmute man to Superman in Sun and Mensch, or Sun Man, a man who will again be a god. This is an old Aryan concept, which is not unlike traditional Greek thought and the initiation of the mysteries of Apollo and Dionysus. The Dorian Greeks had a nostalgia for Hyperborea, and so do we. The first polar or Hyperborean race had the power called Odal or Vril, which has now been lost. The task of the adept is to try to recover this power and become like Shiva or Wotan again the Overman. There are many legends about the Tibetans and the Battle of the Bunker. As a matter of fact, the mission of the Tibetans was to preserve and protect the entrance of the Hollow Earth, like the Incas in America. The real link between Tibet and the Third Reich was a swastika, the same as that of the religion of Bon, of pre-Buddhist Tibet, which was Aryan of the Dropas, of the Hyperboreans. The Hyperborean Aryan gods lost the purity of the blood. 
They mixed with the daughters of man, an involution, a paradise lost. The avatar comes at the last moment when everything seems lost. When the memory of the blood is faint, almost obliterated. The avatar rekindles the spirit, shakes the world and infuses courage in those still loyal. <coughs> During the final offensive in the Ardennes, SS soldiers wounded in British and American hospitals steadfastly refused blood transfusions for fear of losing the memory of the blood. The whole SS initiation ceremony at Wevelsburg centered around the recuperation and the regeneration of this lost memory of the blood. In order to understand Miguel Serrano, particularly this deep, obscure tome, this esoteric masterpiece, one needs to have read Savitri Devi, at least her lightning and the sun. This is not a book. It is a musical mystery and mysticism, darkness and light, esoteric symbolism, astral travel, master and pupil, the memory of the blood, and so much more. A book describing the ongoing titanic and eternal battle between gods and devils. A dark force, a satanic spirit, and the coming or returning Hyperborean Aryan Age. Blood memory is sometimes described as our ancestral, meaning genetic, connection to our language, songs, spirituality, and cultural teachings. It's the good feeling that we experience when we're near these things. In psychology, genetic memory implies that certain kinds of memories could be inherited, being present at birth in the absence of any associated sensory experience. Some interpretations of this memory of the blood ties it into the Grail quest, the same guarded esoteric treasure leading back through ancient secret societies, the Knights Templar, the Cathars of the 12th and 13th centuries, and a dynasty of obscure French kings deposed more than 1300 years ago. The Grail treasure was not comprised of material riches, but a secret so explosive and controversial that it radiates out from antiquity all the way through into contemporary politics, modern religions, and an ancient war which did not end with the Phoenicians, but continues, often covertly, until this day. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. My published work is available on Amazon, as well as through various other major book outlets, if you'd like to support my work, you could do that through patreon.com. There should be a link in the description section for those that are interested. Please have a wonderful weekend, and I hope to see you again soon.